Cliff Johnson from uh, uh, how many bands, Cliff? Uh, Pez Band, <laughs> uh, The Thumbs, right? Off Broadway, USSA, which was short lived. Yeah, but that's uh, cool. And then Black and Blonde, right? And then and then you guys went back to Off Broadway again, right? And then um, now you're doing uh, more of a, a thing, a solo thing, or you're well, it's uh, called Cliff Johnson and the Happy Jacks. Okay. Now, we don't have any records yet of that band. We've only played out about four or five times, and we're changing the lineup. Okay. But um, it's pretty cool. You know, we uh, have uh, some promising opportunities in uh, Las Vegas, which is has turned into a pretty cool rock town, you mm -hmm. know. Sure. Lot. And uh, <clears throat> Japan and Europe. Mm-hmm. Because they, you know, we just, they love Western music over there and they love vinyl. Are you, uh, do you have a nice little following in, uh, in, the, in the Orient and in, uh, in Japan? Uh, or we'll got a, see. Got a I few mean, fans? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they kind of liked Off Broadway's first record, I believe. That's cool. And then two of the guys I played with, one was in Screech and Weasels and the other in Methadones, and they were quite popular over there. They just love Western music. Now let me, let me let me let's go let's go way back let's let's go back to when you were a kid growing up in Oak Park. Yeah. Uh, you grad you graduated from Oak Park River Forest. Yeah. Uh, what year? Class of Remember something. Me? Something something. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. Um, now uh, did you have a band in oh, high yeah. school? Did you it guys was, actually you know, play all the dances like you say in Bully Bully? Did oh you, yeah. Did you? Yeah, actually that song is real. That is Except real. the part about busting out the guy's teeth. You didn't do that. Didn't, no. No. Okay. But, I can't uh, see you doing that, but you know no. somebody's pushed. It just uh, <laughs> it rhymed, I guess. <laughs> I was like always afraid of that song. I was yeah, like, I don't, yeah. I don't know if I want to go see Off Broadway. No, if I, I do something wrong, he might beat me up. I don't know. I have. I think it was at the Palladium, New York, where we were we were uh, terribly mismanaged and, and misbooked. Uh, we were on the road with three heavy metal bands, and all I saw were like fifteen thousand. 17 year old kids giving us the finger nice. every night, every <laughs> night. And one night I did jump out over the orchestra pit into the front row and pounded somebody and I, that's not like me. No. I'm a peace guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. Can't I mean, see you pulling an actual rose. I just lost it and I've never done that before. And that's the only time I've done that. I, uh, I got to open for Weird Al a couple times. Yankee? And Weird Al Yankee. Yeah. Yankee Fish. And uh, he, he's, his, his fans are like really nice, nerdy people. But, uh, but they even, uh, they turned on me. I know, I know how that feels. You know, 5,000 people telling you you suck all, this, all, yeah. in, all in unison, it hurts. Yeah. Um, now, let, let, let's go back before you had a band, because everybody um, has uh, their influences. You must have had, I know, I know from watching some of your live stuff that you're a huge Beatles fan, because nobody would get up on stage and sing parts of Mr. Moonlight unless they were actually, yeah. if they were a big Beatles fan, unless they're yeah. a big Beatles fan. Plus, I was of age in 1964, when they first came out, Ed Sullivan, uh, to appreciate them. I think I was like 10 years old or mm -hmm. whatever. I was taking pictures of the TV. Okay. And they actually came out. Do, do you still have they, them? They were a little blue. I don't know. You don't know. But I put on my sister's snow boots mm -hmm. and come put my hair down and tried to emulate, you know, okay. the Beatles. And I was living in South Dakota at that time. But oh, anyway, wow. in, in Oak Park, uh, my family... Actually, we had a radio family. My father was in Hollywood interviewing women, doing Queen for a Day and Meet the Misses, really corny. And then he would give away meat and mar marshmallow fluff. And, oh, okay. You know. A um, Wally Phillips type thing? Kind of like that, you okay. know. And he was, he was an interviewer. And my mother couldn't stand it there. She didn't want to raise a family there. Yeah. And I don't blame her, so... She said, uh, I just can't, I can't handle this, and decided to leave. So she went back to South Dakota and lived with his mother. And finally, Dad, you know, didn't want to lose his family. Right. So he got a job at the Wrigley Building um, in radio, and they asked him what he wanted to do. And he, his idea was to buy a house in Oak Park, mm -hmm. Uh, and then just have a, the family growing up around the breakfast table with microphones all over the place. You could hear toilets flushing. And, really? Daddy, will you wipe me? And, oh, man. You know, we'd be doing... That's different. Uh, he'd be doing commercials. Well, it was like a, one of the first reality shows. Really? 
Um, but I'll, but well, just radio. Just it was radio. all not scripted. You know, yeah. Uh, it went on for like 10 years, 12 years. Come on, what was it called? Breakfast with the Johnsons. In Oak Park? Yeah. Really? It was... Um, what, what was the broadcast on? What, what station? I think BBM, GN, and then it was syndicated, and we sent tapes back from Europe. And so you guys were a showbiz family even before you became a, a lead, yeah, lead guy yeah, for a band. My sisters all helped me with my choice of music, too, in those days. They brought them all the singles. So I got really hooked on girl groups, like Shirelles, okay. Crystals, mm -hmm. Ronnie Spector, yeah. um, Dusty Springfield, Leslie Gore. So my first greatest influences were the girls. And I'm even thinking of doing with the Happy Jacks a record called Boys Do Girls and all uh, girl songs. Okay, now what uh, what was your uh, instrument of choice when you first started out? Were you in the drums or guitar? Or? Well, the first band I was in in sixth grade, I played, you probably heard of Jay's Potato Chips. Yeah. They used to be called Japs. Yes. Leonard Jap lived in River Forest. But I think in 1943 or 41, whatever, they had to change the name to Jay's. Yeah. Because uh, that, Armor and all the that. word Jap wasn't too popular no. in, uh, in the U.S. So what did you... What did and you so up? basically I'm getting to this. They used to come in canisters. Okay. Metal canisters. Yeah. And so I, I played that okay. I, um, with, with um, coat hangers. Okay. Like the cardboard part of the coat hangers. Yeah. And then I used the coat hanger, the metal parts, for cymbals. Okay. And uh, <laughs> so... Then, and my sister, um, later when we moved uh, to uh, back to Oak Park, my sister and mother bought me uh, a guitar and an amp. Okay. You remember what it was? It was a Tisco guitar, and it was like a... Was it a cheapy or a good one, or...? It was very, you know, uh, affordable, okay. inexpensive, but in some cases you can get a great little guitar for couple hundred dollars. You know? yeah. In those days it was less. But I remember then my bands in high school, I mean we played every weekend. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. At Oak Park there were like three or four or five bands, three main bands. Right. And it was, we were the Rising Suns, S O N S. There were the Cellar Dwellers and the Sarfs. Where'd you guys play? Like at bars or did you no, just do all the sock No, we couldn't ops? play at bars. We so were all the sock 16s. Ops? Yeah, yeah, I mean. VFW halls maybe? Ridgeland Common, yeah. Uh, Churches, um, uh, you know, the field house at the high school, yeah. uh, uh, ice skating rinks, you know, anywhere. anywhere. But every weekend we played, and it was it was incredible that in high school right. you could have a dance every weekend. And when did you guys start getting into like uh, you know the bigger venues? When did you just start like hitting it like you know? Well, not till see I went to school. Uh, by the way, the reason that, that all stopped, and then I, I had written Bully Bully about this, is because these guys had come in drunk, you know, as juniors and seniors, mm -hmm. and they'd uh, start fights, and they were flushing cherry bombs down the toilets, and all, so they stopped having the... They grew the shows for the you shows, guys. you know, we couldn't have them anymore. So, and, and that's how I wrote Bully Bully. Do you remember your, uh, do you remember your first uh, real gig, the first time you ever got paid? Uh, in like yeah, it was in a, a garage in River Forest, and we got, we were a three-piece. We wouldn't let the bass player plug in, because uh -huh. he couldn't play, yeah. but he could afford <laughs> the uh, he equipment. The, the Stu Sutcliffe syndrome? I guess. <laughs> he looked but, good, uh, but he couldn't play at all? We got paid $21. They were going to give us 20 but since we're three of us, they gave us 21 21 bucks. Seven Pretty cool. Not bad. Yeah, and uh, some free pizza, maybe. Got yeah, some free soda. Uh, I think we had some snacks. Sure. What was uh, now? Uh, let's let's skip ahead. And uh, you guys, you know, obviously became huge rock stars in the '70s and '80s and well, stuff. I don't know. I, to me, you were. Okay, okay. that's all that matters. All right. Uh, and um, all about the listener. This is my little world here. <laughs> yes, right. Right. No, really, it's all about you know we. I always say thank you for letting us facilitate your party. Because it's not about us; it's about the mojo that's created, yeah. you know, sure. together the interaction. What was your? Uh, you, you said in the earlier you were talking about playing in some tours where you were playing in front of uh, seventeen thousand kids and there were heavy metal bands. What, what was your biggest gig left that you ever did? Oh, like where you got out there and you went, "Holy crap, this is giant!" Well, we, we did uh, the, the. It's changed names so many times. It was the World Theater. Oh, Tinley Park. Tinley Park. Yeah. And, uh, First Midwest now, I think it is. Whatever it is, it's all corporate now. Yeah. 
so I don't know if they perhaps thirty five thousand, forty thousand. That's a big game. You know. And when we played with the right bands, we went over really well. Yeah. Actually, some of the headliners got ticked because we. Oh yeah. We had a majority of the. Sh well, <laughs> when I when I saw you guys at Star Plaza in '95 with Cheap Trick and Loverboy, you guys were kicking some major yeah, ass well, at that show. It was, you know. I walked in there and I was like. It's cheap trick on stage already. It's off Broadway. They're just like kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, we, the crowd was just going insane. Well, I think everybody was in the same place that I was at that time. We were just like we couldn't believe you guys. You know, you got back together, and here you are. I mean, we all we all grew up with you guys. Everybody right. in the Midwest. You know, if you lived in Michigan, Wisconsin, Indiana, of course Chicago, you grew up, and you know, you're, you're you guys were on the loop all the time. Well, that's yeah, another thing. All the time. Uh, I'm there was there was some. Ill feelings about that with other stations because my management wanted us to go exclusively with that station oh, you, you mean, mentioned. Yeah. Uh, well, we did the very first Loop Fest with Loverboy, as a matter of fact. Okay. And uh, it went quite well. It was a, quite a. Did you ever play huge Chicago crowd. Fest? If I could we just... did the first Mayor Byrne uh, Taste of Chicago, it was called. Okay. Or Chicago, yes. Chicago Fest was like from 77 to like 83. Well, yeah, we played with. Uh, the headliner was Bobby Palmer, Robert Palmer. Oh yeah, and I remember diving off. It was on a pier, you know, on a floating like. Oh yeah. And we, I dived off during the vamp of full moon. Okay. And I couldn't get back on stage, <laughs> so this boat picked me up and they threw up a. They dropped a ladder for me and I crawled up and. Very nice. Fortunately, didn't get electrocuted. You, know. you were soaking wet. Oh yeah, I had dived in. Dived into Lake Michigan. All right. It was just. I, I like to see this. Is there anywhere? Is there any? Anyone capture that? I don't know. <laughs> I find stuff all the time. People captured. Now, now, Cliff. Um, most people know you because of Off Broadway. Okay, mm -hmm. that was. I mean, that was a huge, huge band, especially here in the Midwest. But before that, you were in. You were another acts. You were in Pez. You were in Pez band. Pez band. Was that your first official like big bar band? Yeah, I'd say so. Or was that? Or it's Thumbs. I'm sorry. That's later. Pez Thumbs. band was quite popular. We. Uh, we really started to get um, active in Lake Geneva because we played a club th for a month. Okay. It, it was called the Black Knight at that time. Now okay. it's all changed. Like this, is, this is Pez Band now. Right. Okay. And Cheap Trick played a month right you know, before us. Then we did a month and then... So that, I've heard things. If I don't, if I could just interrupt real fast. I, now I, I used to, I used to hear rumors from guys that would go to these shows, yeah. and they would say, "I'm not trying to badmouth anybody here, but that you guys would be packed. I mean, people yeah. would come to see you guys, and nobody would be at the cheap trick shows back in those days." Uh, I don't know about that, but I'll just tell you that the, <laughs> the club owner made um, a lot of money and didn't pay us much. You know, okay. I remember asking him for a raise. Because we got paid by the week, and he, he wrote it down on a piece of paper. I can cut was, that part out if you want me to. It was $50. No, that's okay. <laughs> so, but the point is, we were with all the girls from the Playboy Club. because Oh, right was, there. Um, all the bunnies. All the, yeah, there were girls, but they were called bunnies, you know, <laughs> at, at, at work. But we spent a month with about 30 of them. Wow, rough gig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, then, uh, and then, okay, so uh, the, the list goes... Uh, Pez Band, yeah. then Thumbs? Or was it Off Broadway, then Thumbs? Uh, no, it was Thumbs. Okay. And that was with Tommy Aldridge on drums. It's kind of funny because it was a real strong band. I think if we stayed together, it could have gone really gone places, but it was more on the heavy side, and mm -hmm. I, want, I wanted the pop culture. Okay. When, uh, you know, the Cars and Pretenders and Elvis Costello yeah. and the likes of them came out. Mm -hmm. I was really excited about that. So I left and Tommy went with Ozzy. Then in a later band, it's funny because uh, the drummer was Randy Castillo and bless his heart, he's, he's, he passed away mm -hmm. some time ago. Was, he was loved by all, but he went with Ozzy after. Wow. <laughs> so really? I was like a broker for drummers. Yeah. Broker for Ozzy. <laughs>